fund approved this week and when you'll see the payment hit your bank account. Nearly two years after the federal government instituted mass mandates on planes, airlines are pushing back, asking the president to allow passengers to travel mask free. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein, Peter live from Hartsville, Jackson. Brittany, do travelers there seem to be in favor of this? How are they feeling about it? So it's kind of a mixed bag, Aisha. We've got some people that walk right in without a mask on and then they end up putting a mask on. But for the majority, everyone is still wearing their mask in here. However, as you mentioned, the Delta CEO alongside nine other airlines did send that letter to President Joe Biden asking the administration to drop the transportation mask mandate and testing requirements for international travelers. Delta CEO Ed Bastian saying in a statement, the measures no longer fit the current environment. The CEO adding science shows it's time to move from mandates to guidance and personal health choices. The 10 airlines that signed that letter emphasize their use of air filter systems and the vertical airflow in airplane cabins as helping keep passengers safe. The group also noted airplane employees have faced daily challenges from customers due to mandates and it has taken a toll on employee morale. The White House says it's consulting the CDC about lifting the mandate. We look at hospitalizations for COVID-19. We look at hospital capacity. And importantly, we also look at cases. So all of those go into the formulation as we um, use those metrics for future guidance. Those countries are lifting the restrictions brutally from too much to too few. The mandate is set to expire on April 18th. Again, those airlines are asking for it to be lifted now. If the Biden administration chooses to do so, they can always reimpose it if cases start to tick back up. Aisha. All right, we'll see how this unfolds. Brittany, thank you. So we have an update for you this midday on some extra money coming your way. Governor Brian Kemp has officially signed off on tax refund payments for Georgians. The money is from a surplus of more than $2 billion in the state's budget. So what does this mean for you? People who pay taxes for to the state in 2020 and 2021 will get a check. If you filed as a single person, you could get up to $250. If you filed jointly as a couple, you could get up to $500. There are some stipulations listed on the state's website that says why that amount might drop for you. If you've already filed for 2021, the Department of Revenue, they're going to try to include that extra money with your state refund. If it's already been processed and you've gotten your return already, they'll automatically issue you a separate refund. A teenage girl is out of surgery after being hit by a stray bullet in her own home. Police say this shooting started with an argument in the parking lot at the Hidden Crest Apartments. Paula Soro explains what we know. Yellow tape fencing this block of the Hidden Crest Apartments, the neighborhood where Demia Blair has lived in for nearly two years. It's a nice community, like kids come out and play like all day, every day, all day, every day. Nothing has happened like this at all. She says she lives about 10 feet away from where Atlanta police say an argument escalated to gunfire. APD released a video on Facebook with some information. We're already noticing an escalation of disputes that are happening out in our community. We just ask people to learn how to resolve their issues without resulting to gun violence. Police say a fight broke out on this parking lot. A group of people then began shooting at each other when one of the rounds entered an apartment hitting a 16-year-old girl. I heard like five shots and I heard a, like a child screaming, so, and I didn't know where it come from. I was going to my car. This happened just before 5.30. The teenager was taken in stable condition to Grady Memorial Hospital and was undergoing surgery. We believe that she was an innocent bystander. For Blair, who has a two and eight year old, this hits close to home. This very scary, it's very scary, very scary. Like, because my kids come out and play too, like, they could have been anybody's child, like, it could have been mine. Investigators are still working to get information on who fired the shot or details that may help them find the shooter. In the meantime, they ask people to reach out to Crime Stoppers if they know anything. 
Former Atlanta City official Mitzi Bickers has been convicted on multiple charges in her bribery corruption case. A jury found her guilty on nine charges and acquitted her of three others. Bickers was indicted in 2018 for using her position in the city to steer lucrative city contracts. The U.S. Attorney's Office says bribes got Bickers more than $2 million and almost $17 million in city contracts. Bickers will be sentenced in July. Well, we have a much drier end to the week, but a cool off is going to come along with it. If we can exchange a cool off for the rain, I'm all for it because that's still a really gorgeous shot behind you, Chesley. Absolutely. And, you know, looking at it from a window, you think, oh, man, let me run out of here and, you know, but the, the cool air may get you because we yeah. started out this week with temperatures in the 70s, highs in the 70s. In fact, yesterday we hit 77 for a high temperature. Today on the cooler side. In fact, temperatures right now are in the 50s, but we have that sunshine out there. Some spots seeing a little bit of cloudiness, just a little bit happening. If you take a look here, you can see that moisture coming in off the Gulf there. The rain itself is well down to the south and east of our state. And back upstream, not much going on. An upper level low that will be lifting further off to the north, and so it will be dry for us. Now we got another little front that's going to come through the area, drier, but uh, it will increase our cloud cover about later tonight into tomorrow. Today, we get a chance to at least enjoy the sun. You can see up here to the northwest, down through Rome, all the way into Cobb County, where we just saw that live shot there. Uh, we have the clear skies. Once you get to the east of the city of Atlanta, is where we see a few of those high, thin clouds. Not going to take away too much from our sun and not dropping any precipitation around here. It's going to be a dry one out there, but cool. Look at these temperatures. We're in the 50s. This is where we started out yesterday. We started out with temperatures in the mid-50s, right? So we're just now there in Atlanta, 55 degrees, 57 degrees in Covington, 59 degrees in Athens, everywhere in the 50s. We'll be heating up into the 60s this afternoon, right around 62 degrees for your forecast high. You got plans this evening? You'll be fine. Later on tonight, maybe going out for some dinner, celebrate a birthday, right? We got uh, fair skies. Temperatures will be right around 70 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight, and then we'll see those temperatures fall off from there. 64 degrees, the afternoon high. Now, I'm calling it mild but it will be cooler than what we have been experiencing. So you may want to grab a jacket. Again, 60 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight uh, if you're going out maybe to eat your dinner out on the patio. There are some more changes coming our way. In fact, we got a warm-up in the future. We'll talk about that in the full forecast coming up. Aisha, back to you. President Biden is in Europe for landmark summits today with NATO and European Council leaders. This comes on the one month mark since Russia invaded Ukraine. We've seen the heartbreaking and devastating images coming out showing the destruction and now leaders will talk about ways to stop it. Bree Jackson is in Washington with the latest. President Biden in Brussels for a high stakes emergency summit. The main issue at hand, Russia's brutal attacks on Ukraine. The president and NATO leaders acknowledging a frustrated Vladimir Putin could soon turn to chemical weapons. More sanctions against Russia are on the table for NATO leaders. Members are pledging to double their military presence near Ukraine. We are determined to continue to impose costs on Russia to bring about the end of this brutal war. NATO's chief says the idea of admitting Ukraine to the security alliance is not on the table. Ukraine's president addressed the summit in a video message, putting more pressure on leaders, saying Russia had a month of impunity, destroying a peaceful country. The meetings in Europe come on the heels of the U.S. officially accusing Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. Russia's forces have destroyed apartment buildings, schools, hospitals, other elements of the critical civilian infrastructure. The death toll climbing on both sides, with estimates of nearly 1,000 civilian deaths and up to 15,000 Russian troops killed. The more we can do to, to help the Ukrainians, I think the faster that uh, uh, this thing can be over. President Biden and European leaders also discussing support for the roughly 10 million people displaced by the conflict. As the prices of a lot of things go up, one of the biggest financial strains right now, yep, gas prices. But are we starting to see some improvements? The experts over at AAA say prices are already down about 20% just from last week. So here are a few ways to save even more. Research your resources. On 11alive.com, we have an updated list on the cheapest locations around Metro Atlanta. AAA also offers this on their app. Consider carpooling. Empty out your car. The heavier it is, the more gas your car is going to need. And when you're filling up, see if gas stations offer lower prices for paying in cash rather than paying with your card. 
AAA says even though they cannot tell the future, we're likely going to be dealing with these prices for a little bit longer. So unfortunately, don't have a crystal ball. We're just going to have to kind of ride it out at this point uh, to see uh, where gas prices go. We have more information for you on gas prices and getting the most bang for your buck over on 11alive.com. A Metro Atlanta family spent months providing input and waiting for their dream home to be finally built just for the home builder to pull the rug out from under them in the 11th hour. We explain what happened and how no laws were broken next. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet. But is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Home buyers beware. I've never heard of this happening. So you've heard all about the bidding wars over homes in Atlanta, right? But one woman is sharing a unique story about this crazy seller's market. Her builder bailed on her just before closing in order to put the house on the market for tens of thousands of dollars more. And as John Sherrick shows us, what happened is perfectly legal. Imagine contracting with a builder for your dream home. Hannah James contract $295,000. She signed it a year ago. She watched her new home take shape. Then in January, a week before closing, the buyer tore up her contract and put her house on the market. The price online now, $370,000. 25% more than the price in her contract with the builder. I was very hurt, a little bit of disbelief. She knows the builder did nothing illegal. But so I think ethically, no, he's he's dead wrong. This public school teacher is still waiting for a refund from the builder of nearly five thousand dollars. To wait a week before closing to tell someone that you're going to increase the price of the home, I think is ethically not. That's just not right. The builder, Heatherland Homes of Atlanta, the person who answered the phone listed on its web page, said she didn't know how to reach anyone with Heatherland Homes. Hannah James saw online others with similar complaints. Someone claiming to speak for the company said they had no choice but to cancel contracts for more money to cover the skyrocketing costs of building materials. Prices are just going crazy. 
Atlanta realtor Kevin Maxberry. It's unethical and unfortunate for the buyer to have to experience something like that. There's very little that a buyer can do because all builder contracts are what are called unilateral contracts. They're written to protect the builder that they have many ways out of the contract. A lesson this school teacher wants everyone to learn. All right, take a look at the beautiful sunshine. This is up in the Blue Ridge area. You can see it looks gorgeous out there. A little bit of a breeze with the flags moving, but I really want you to pay close attention to these trees. Look at that. See how those buds are coming out there? Mm hmm Adding to the pollen in the air. Get your antihistamines, folks. Up to 987. That's our count for today, so it's in the high category, but you know how high it gets around here. We get counts in the thousands, and I think that's where we're heading. Low on the grass today, but moderate on the weeds and the mold. And so, yeah, you may be feeling it a little bit as you head out this afternoon, and certainly you want to head out, right? After yesterday, we had the clouds, the rain, and the thunderstorms. Today is a gorgeous-looking day, or you can just enjoy it from a window. Some people do that, right? Just a few clouds overhead, mainly east of the city is where you're going to find those. They're thin. And so it's not taking away too much from our sunshine. You run into the thicker clouds once you get just to the east of, say, Edenton. Heading over toward Augusta, that's where you have the clouds in place. It'll be thick there through the afternoon. The rain itself is well uh, down to the south and east of our area, mainly in the southern portions of the state. As far as the temperatures go, we're in the 50s. It's going to be a relatively cool afternoon, cooler than what we have been experiencing. You're down into the 50s in the southern portions of Henry County, over toward Coweta County, even into Fayette County. You're looking at temperatures in the upper 50s right now. 55 degrees, Powder Springs. Mapleton, you're at 54. 53, uh, 56 degrees over into Hiram in Paulding County. You got 59 degrees in Tucker, Shamley at 57 and 57 degree, 56 degrees rather in downtown Atlanta. This is the Wizometer. It's how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. We'll get there, just not today. Uh, our temperatures will be below the average. Our average high this time of year would be around 68 degrees. We're looking at 64 mainly in the low 60s for an afternoon high, but a gorgeous looking day nonetheless with the mostly sunny skies that we have out there. Again, just a few clouds overhead and every now and again, you're going to feel a little bit of a gust. Those winds anywhere between 10, 15 miles per hour gust may be a little bit higher than that at times, not as windy as it was yesterday when we saw those gusts in the 20 mile per hour range. You're looking at the rain again, staying down to the south. That moisture just streaming in from the south here, heading up to the north. That front still making its way. Uh, away from us back upstream. Not a whole lot going on upper system, upper level system that's heading further off to the north. We do have a front at the surface that's going to come through later on tonight and just will reinforce that cool shot of air. So temperatures in the low 60s today will be right back there again for tomorrow. I think it will be closer to 60 for a high temperature after this front moves through. Now it will bring in just a few extra clouds. And our model's trying to ring out a sprinkle or two. That'll be it. So we'll give it a 20% chance for the rain. The good news is that as we head into the weekend, no chance, right? Or very little chance, especially as we start the work week next week. The temperatures will remain on the cool side for our Saturday and Sunday, but start to go up as we head into next week. In fact, if you're a warm weather fan, I think you're going to like the temperatures that will be coming our way next week. Our next best chance for the rain really won't come until we get to Wednesday, Thursday. That time frame as we look a little bit further out at the models. Check out the forecast track model for the next couple of days. We're looking at Again, sunshine for the rest of the afternoon. Again, a few high thin clouds are possible, but not going to take away from our sun. Overnight, you'll notice the clouds coming in. This is by Friday, 545 in the morning. See this green, these green little circles here and there. Maybe an isolated sprinkle or two. You may experience it as a few dots on your windshield at times. We'll have partly sunny skies, especially during the afternoon. Here we are by noon. And again, you'll notice again a few little isolated showers uh, that may come down. For the most part, most of us will be on the dry side. We're going to get rid of those clouds as we head into the evening on Friday, and it's going to set us up for mostly sunny skies as we head into Saturday. Saturday will be mostly sunny all day long. Going into Sunday, temperatures will really cool off again, going back down into the 30s for overnight lows on Sunday. Sunday morning, that's where we're going to start off, so you may need a coat if you're going out early on Sunday. We'll hit up to 64 degrees for the high temperature under mostly sunny skies. Take a look at next week. 72 will be the high on Monday. Maybe my pick for the week. That's an 11 live day for us. We really start to warm up as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. Head of that next disturbance is going to come through 79 on Tuesday. Wednesday, you're looking at 78. So getting closer to 80 degrees for high temperature. So if you're a warm weather fan, yeah, stick around next week. We'll have something for you as well. Aisha, back to you. We got a little streak. You pick Monday this week, too. Ah, I see what you're doing there. Next, our Y guy explains why there are so many new efforts popping up in Metro Atlanta to form new cities. He is a 
character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that like he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of drive. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that like he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A different cry, now streaming on Roku. Today, Cobb County is holding a town hall about efforts to form four new cities in the area. The requests are nothing new. The pattern started 17 years ago, resulting in more than a dozen tries to establish new cities in Metro Atlanta. Why? Here's our why guy. It took nearly 40 years. Back in 1966, when the city of Atlanta tried to absorb a large area of North Fulton County, many living in that area objected. It sparked a movement to form a new city, but it wasn't easy. According to the Georgia Municipal Association, state law at the time prevented a new city from forming if it was within three miles of another. The Georgia Municipal Association's Rusi Patel says that restriction went away in 2005, opening the door to the creation of Sandy Springs. When that prohibition got wiped off the books, that's when you started seeing um, all these new cities uh, coming into place, and, and it started with Sandy Springs. Since then, there have been at least 17 similar efforts to form new cities in Metro Atlanta, including some ongoing now. Let's look at why. Emory University political science professor Andra Gillespie points out that just prior to the change in Georgia law, there was a change at the state capitol. After Republicans took control of state government in 2003, they were much more open to the idea of incorporation and cityhood movements, and they changed laws that made it easier. In order to form a new city, the state legislature has to okay the idea first, then it's put to voters who live in that area. Reasons for wanting to form a new city can range from political disagreements to money. According to historic records, the area of Cobb County known as Mableton operated as an incorporated city from 1912 until it had to turn back to the county to help pay for repairs from flood damage in 1916. The area now wants to become a city once again. The school year is almost over, and for the first time in eight months, we're getting a peek inside. Fourth grader Alaya Horn School is part of our Learning Curve series next. He's 
is my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and like he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and like he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out. For the past eight months, we followed fourth grader Alea Horn's return to the classroom. And for the first time, we're getting a look inside her class. Liza Lucas reports on how it's been a much different experience compared to virtual learning last year. So uh, this is my classroom. Uh, this is where I am most of the time. For the first time since classes started in August, we got a chance to chat with Alea Horn in the space she spends the majority of her school day. It's been getting a lot better. With two months to go until the last day of school, Alea's feeling hopeful. We haven't like talked about COVID as much, which I'm really, I'm really happy about. So instead, we chatted about the return of regular activities. Well, we're able to have chorus, at, like we're we're able to do stuff. And Alea showed off her classroom. Zachary sits right here, and Stacy's right here. Including her favorite corner to work. You can use the stool as a desk and put your laptop on top of it. A reminder that life right now is definitely a different experience than what Alea was dealing with a year ago, learning virtually. I'm okay with the hardest test in the world. I've said this on like my first episode. I do like the hardest test in the world just to be back here. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. I heard like five shots and I heard a, like a child screaming. So, and I didn't know where it come from. 
Right now, police are investigating a 16 year old girl hit by a stray bullet in another senseless shooting. And developing now, you may be getting some money back from the state of Georgia. We're going to break down a special tax refund approved this week and when you'll see the payment in your bank account. Well, it's been nearly two years after the federal government instituted mass mandates on planes. Airlines are now pushing back, asking the president to allow passengers to travel mask free. 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter is live inside Hartsville Jackson International Airport. Brittany, how are travelers there, you know, feeling about this idea? I'm on the side of not just yet that close together on the plane without a mask. What are they saying? It's definitely mixed here. There are people that have just been wearing masks for a long time in the airport and that's what they feel comfortable wearing. There's other folks that are walking in without them and they're putting them on because they're being reminded. But again, it is very mixed because it's just been around so long. Delta CEO though joined nine other airline CEOs in signing a letter to the president asking the administration to drop that transportation mask mandate and testing requirements for international travelers. The Delta CEO Ed Bastian saying in a statement, the measure no longer fits the current environment. The CEO adding science shows it's time to move on from the mandates to guidance and personal health choices. The 10 airlines that signed the letter emphasized their use of air filtration systems and the vertical airflow in airplane cabins as helping keep passengers safe. The group also noted airplane employees have faced daily challenges from customers due to the mandates and it has taken an overall toll on employee morale. The White House says it is consulting the CDC about lifting the mandate. We look at hospitalizations for COVID-19, we look at hospital capacity, and importantly, we also look at cases. So all of those go into the formulation as we um, use those metrics for future guidance. Those countries are lifting the restrictions brutally from too much to too few. The mandate is set to expire April 18th, so coming up here, but the airlines want it expired now, excuse me, lifted right now. So if the president were to lift the mandate, he can always reimpose it if cases do tick back up. Aisha. Yes, yeah, a busy travel season too, as we get ready for all those families to hit the skies for spring break. So we'll see what happens. Brittany, thank you. We have an update for you on some extra money coming your way. Governor Kemp has officially signed off on tax refund payments for Georgians. That money is coming from a surplus of more than $2 billion in the state's budget. So how can this impact you and your wallet? People who paid state taxes in 2020 and 2021, they're going to get the checks. If you filed as a single person, you could get up to $250. If you filed jointly as a couple, you both could get up to $500 collectively. So if you've already filed your 2021 returns, the Department of Revenue, they'll try to include that extra money with your state refund. But if it's already been processed and you've gotten your money back, you will automatically get a separate refund. A teenage girl is out of surgery after being hit by a stray bullet in her own home. Police say this shooting started with an argument in the parking lot at Hidden Crest Apartments. Paula Soro explains what we know. Yellow tape fencing this block of the Hidden Crest Apartments, the neighborhood where Demia Blair has lived in for nearly two years. It's a nice community like kids come out and play like all day, every day, all day, every day. Nothing has happened like this at all. She says she lives about 10 feet away from where Atlanta police say an argument escalated to gunfire. APD released a video on Facebook with some information. We're already noticing an escalation of disputes that are happening out in our community. We just ask people to learn how to resolve their issues without resulting to gun violence. Police say a fight broke out on this parking lot. A group of people then began shooting at each other when one of the rounds entered an apartment hitting a 16-year-old girl. I heard like five shots and I heard a, like a child screaming. So, and I didn't know where it come from. I was going to my car. This happened just before 5.30. The teenager was taken in stable condition to Grady Memorial Hospital and was undergoing surgery. We believe that she was an innocent bystander. For Blair, who has a two and eight year old, this hits close to home. This very scary. It's very scary. Very scary. Like, because my kids come out and play too. Like, they could have been anybody's child. Like, it could have been mine.
Investigators are still working to get information on who fired the shot or details that may help them find the shooter. In the meantime, they ask people to reach out to Crime Stoppers if they know anything about that. Former Atlanta city official Mitzi Bickers has been convicted on multiple charges in her bribery corruption case. A jury found her guilty on nine charges and acquitted her on three others. Bickers was indicted in 2018 for using her position in the city to steer lucrative city contracts. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the bribes got Bickers more than $2 million in almost $17 million in city contracts. She will be sentenced in July. We will have a much drier end to the week here on this Friday Eve, but it's going to be cooling down a little bit. You know, give or take this time of year. We can't have it all, right? You, yeah, I know you want it all. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, you're right. You can't really have it all. Uh, and that's the way it goes when it comes to weather, right? We have clear skies in some spots. This is our, uh, we call it the, our Circle 75 camera. It's over by Truist Park. You're looking downtown Atlanta. You can see as we look more to the south and to the east, we do have those clouds that are overhead, mostly clear here uh, over Cobb County right now, uh, but we do have those clouds off to the to the east. And so those clouds not really taking away too much sunshine. They high, they're high and thin. You go well down to the south and east. That's where those clouds get a little bit thicker, and that's where you'll find the rain. No rain around here at all, and we're not anticipating any rain either. OK, so our camera right about there and you can see where we have those clouds just to the south and east. So just wanted to show you that on our live cam. Temperatures right now are running in the 60s, getting on up there a little bit here. We were in the 50s just last half hour, so you're looking at 60 degrees. It's a popular number. We have it in Peachtree City, Atlanta, Duluth, up to Gainesville, you're at 61. 59 degrees in Kenton, 62 degrees in Athens, 55 over in Edenton. So uh, we started out in the 50s this time yesterday morning, and so a bit on the cool side. We'll only rise into the low 60s for highs for today. A bit breezy at times out there as well. Here's our forecast cast track model. That's what we're going to have sunshine for the rest of the day. Those clouds will gradually pull further and further away. Maybe some high thin clouds rolling through the area, especially later on tonight. In fact, overnight tonight, we'll be watching for a few more clouds to move in. Not going to see much in the way of any rainfall for our Friday, but we got a front that's uh, lifting through the area, and so it will bring in a few extra clouds. A sprinkle or two possible, but that'll be it. Really, it will reinforce that cool shot of air and then clear us out for the weekend. 50 temperatures in the 50s for the most part right now, but we'll heat up to around 64 degrees for an afternoon high. I'm calling that mild. It is a mild afternoon force. You don't need a big heavy coat or anything like that, but a jacket will do you. Again, with those light winds, you're looking at 60 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. So if you have plans maybe to eat out on a patio, maybe celebrate a birthday, you can do so outside. Just know that it will be a bit cooler than what we have been experiencing. Yesterday, we got up to 77 degrees. Those 70s are coming back to us. I'll let you know exactly when and the full forecast coming up. Aisha, back to you. President Biden is in Europe for a landmark summits today with NATO and European Council leaders. This comes on the one month mark since Russia invaded Ukraine. We've seen some heartbreaking and devastating images of the destruction, and now leaders will talk about ways to stop it. Bree Jackson is in Washington with the latest. President Biden in Brussels for a high stakes emergency summit. The main issue at hand, Russia's brutal attacks on Ukraine. The president and NATO leaders acknowledging a frustrated Vladimir Putin could soon turn to chemical weapons. More sanctions against Russia are on the table for NATO leaders. Members are pledging to double their military presence near Ukraine. We are determined to continue to impose costs on Russia to bring about the end of this brutal war. NATO's chief says the idea of admitting Ukraine to the security alliance is not on the table. Ukraine's president addressed the summit in a video message, putting more pressure on leaders, saying Russia had a month of impunity, destroying a peaceful country. The meetings in Europe come on the heels of the U.S. officially accusing Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. Russia's forces have destroyed apartment buildings, schools, hospitals, other elements of the critical civilian infrastructure. The death toll climbing on both sides, with estimates of nearly 1,000 civilian deaths and up to 15,000 Russian troops killed. The more we can do to, to help the Ukrainians, I think the faster that uh, uh, this thing can be over. President Biden and European leaders also discussing support for the roughly 10 million people displaced by the conflict. 
As the prices of a lot of things go up, one of the biggest financial strains right now is something we cannot avoid buying, gas. But we are starting to see some improvements. Experts over at AAA say prices are already down about 20% just from last week. Here are a few more ways for you to save. Research your resources on 11alive.com. We've updated the list of the cheapest locations around Metro Atlanta. AAA also has that on their app too. Consider carpooling. Empty out your trunk. The heavier the car, the more gas your car is going to need. And when you're filling up, see if the gas station offers a cheaper price if you use cash versus your credit card. AAA says even though they can't tell the future, we're likely going to deal with these prices for a little bit longer. So unfortunately, don't have a crystal ball. We're just going to have to kind of ride it out at this point uh, to see uh, where gas prices go. We have more information on gas prices and getting the most bang for your buck over on 11alive.com. A Metro Atlanta family spent months providing input and waiting for their dream home to finally be built. Just for the home builder to pull the rug out from under them in the 11th hour. We'll explain why what happened was completely legal. I can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at... Welcome back to 11 Alive, where Atlanta speaks. Have a question you want to answer? Text us at 404-885-7600. Home buyers beware. You've heard it all about the bidding wars over homes in Atlanta, but one woman is sharing a unique story about this crazy seller's market. Her builder bailed on her just before closing in order to put the house on the market for tens of thousands of dollars more. And as John Sherrick shows us, what happened is perfectly legal. 
Imagine contracting with a builder for your dream home. Hannah James contract, $295,000. She signed it a year ago. She watched her new home take shape. Then in January, a week before closing, the buyer tore up her contract and put her house on the market. The price online now, $370,000, 25% more than the price in her contract with the builder. I was very hurt, a little bit of disbelief. She knows the builder did nothing illegal. But so I think ethically, no, he's he's dead wrong. This public school teacher is still waiting for a refund from the builder of nearly five thousand dollars. To wait a week before closing to tell someone that you're going to increase the price of the home, I think is ethically not. That's just not right. The builder, Heatherland Homes of Atlanta, the person who answered the phone listed on its web page, said she didn't know how to reach anyone with Heatherland Homes. Anna James saw online others with similar complaints. Someone claiming to speak for the company said they had no choice but to cancel contracts for more money to cover the skyrocketing costs of building materials. Prices are just going crazy. Atlanta realtor so, Kevin Maxberry. It's unethical and unfortunate for the buyer to have to experience something like that. There's very little that a buyer can do because all builder contracts are what are called unilateral contracts. They're written to protect the builder, that they have many ways out of the contract. A lesson this school teacher wants everyone to learn. Well, we are looking at uh, spring springing around the area has been. We had the rain yesterday, cold front moved through, so it's helping to cool our temperatures down just a bit, but it's still a very nice looking day. In fact, you're looking now uh, down here to the south, you don't see any clouds at all. I was showing you to the south and to the east where we had some of those clouds overhead, but not, not here. In fact, we're waiting for these trees to start to come back to life a little bit there. You can probably, if you look close enough, can see the little small buds that are taking place pretty soon. <sighs> Right, starts to explode on us a little bit. You can already see some of that maybe in the roadways, maybe on some of your cars as well. And that will likely be the case for today and tomorrow. High count for today, 987. As far as the tree pollen goes, grass is low, weeds are moderate, also mold moderate as well. So you may get out there and start to feel a little bit if you haven't already. And you know you suffer from allergies and histamines. You got to get them in your body for them to work, right? Yeah, go ahead and get it done because you know it's going to get worse. Those counts will get into the thousands, you know. We're looking at those clouds. Here's a better look at it from, here from the radar, and it does show well east of us. We have those thicker clouds. In fact, east of Edenton, over towards Sandersville, we do have a thicker clouds, and then the rain a little bit further to the east and down to the south. We're not going to see any rain here today, even though we'll get a high, thin, passing cloud or two. That will be it. Just last hour, we were in the 50s. Now it's starting to heat up into the 60s a little bit. You got Conyers and over toward Covington here in Newton County at 60 degrees, uh, right at 60 in Peachtree City, Chattahoochee Hills at 60 degrees as well. Fayetteville, you're at 60, knocking on a doorstep over in Temple in northern parts of Carroll County. 57 degrees right now in Douglasville down in Douglas County. 58 in Mapleton, heading to closer to the city. We have those temperatures in the 60s. You're at 63 degrees right now in East Point, but still in the city of Atlanta, you're at 57 degrees. So we're going to heat up. I'm thinking the low 60s will be where we'll land for this afternoon. Some spots. For example, like East Point may get to the middle 60s, but I think we'll all stay in the 60s for this afternoon. Nine out of a possible 11 today on the wisometer. This is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11. 11 would be the most perfect day we could have for this time of year. For example, if our temperatures were in the low 70s, right around 71 degrees, 72 degrees, that's what I consider the sweet spot, especially this time of year under mostly sunny skies, that would be an 11. Today, we're a little bit below our average. We should be around 68, 64 degrees for the high temperature. Bit of a breeze out there, but we do have the blue sky and a lot of spots, so we'll give it a 9. That's a decent number, right? Not too far from an 11. Here's a better look at uh, the region, and you can see upstream not much going on. So the next couple of days will be nice and dry. Uh, we do have a front that's off to the west of us. It will get better organized and begin to lift our way. It will bring in a few extra clouds, but not much in the way of rainfall. Because we have a lifting mechanism in the atmosphere, you get lift, the air rises, the clouds form. You have a chance at least for a stray shower too. I'm giving it a low chance, 10 to 20 percent. That'll be it, but that will be by tomorrow. Today we get to enjoy the sunshine. There's that 20 percent chance. And then over the weekend, nice and dry. In fact, into next week, we're looking at dry conditions. Our next best chance for rain won't come until we get to what's well, a Wednesday, Thursday kind of a time frame, and we could see more thunderstorms by then. We'll keep you updated on that, of course. But for the rest of the afternoon, just enjoy the sun. It's going to be nice. Here comes those clouds by tomorrow. Partly sunny skies is where we'll start. At times, will appear to be mostly cloudy. You may get a dot or two on your windshield. That'll be it. And then we'll clear it out as we head into the weekend. In fact, Saturday and Sunday look nice as well. Now temperatures will remain in the low 60s, even starting off in the 30s on Sunday 
morning. But by the time we get into next week, we rebound. 72 degrees for the high temperature on Monday. That's my pick for the week so far, right? Looking at uh, temperatures going up from there Tuesday, Wednesday, looking at temperatures getting closer to 80 for highs. So if you like it warm, got a little something for you as we head into next week. Aisha, back to you. All right, looking forward to that, Chesley. Thank you. In today's Voices for Equality, we're celebrating the youngest black wine company based here in Atlanta. When you get this bottle, it's not just your normal bottle of wine that you buy off the shelves that are a lot of times made in factories or by huge manufacturers and just kind of slap a label on it and say, here's, here's our wine. No, we literally go through the process from the fruit to the cork to the label to that bag to your hands. Giselle Wine was created by married couple Tiffany and Dante Campbell. In 2018, they produced three cocktail wines that quickly became favorites among wine drinkers. They were invited to Essence Fest in 2019 and was given the title of Best Dessert Wine. From there, Giselle Wine has garnered success nationwide. Obviously, the clientele at Essence is black excellence, right? So um, the wine tasting was full of a lot of our black queens. And when they came out, they went to everybody's station, but they stayed at Giselle Wines. Oh, yeah. They were just like, oh my God. They were just purchasing cases and cases yeah. and cases. They weren't just purchasing the bottle. They had purchased a case because my, my sister needed to try this. My auntie needed to try this. My mother needed to try this. I need to try this. The couple says the word of mouth right here in Atlanta was what helped propel them to the Essence stage. That is a music festival held in New Orleans every year, 4th of July weekend. They hope they can continue to grow and give back to the South Fulton community. They call this wine for the culture because it truly is for us in every single way. Next, the couple is hoping to open a tasting room on Fulton Industrial. Until then, you can order your bottles online. To learn more about the wine and where you can purchase, head on over to 11 Alive. <laughs> Making me feel so bad. Next, our Y Guy explains why there's so many new efforts popping up in Metro Atlanta to form new cities. It's worth the drive. Helps you get there on time, every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? Today, Cobb County is holding a town hall about efforts to form four new cities in the area. The requests are nothing new. The pattern actually started 17 years ago, resulting in more than a dozen tries to establish new cities in Metro Atlanta. Why? Here's our Why Guy. It took nearly 40 years. Back in 1966, when the city of Atlanta tried to absorb a large area of North Fulton County, many living in that area objected. It sparked a movement to form a new city, but it wasn't easy. According to the Georgia Municipal Association, state law at the time prevented a new city from forming if it was within three miles of another. The Georgia Municipal Association's Rusi Patel says that restriction went away in 2005, opening the door to the creation of Sandy Springs. When that prohibition got wiped off the books, that's when you started seeing um, all these new cities uh, coming into place and, and it started with Sandy Springs. Since then, there have been at least 17 similar efforts to form new cities in Metro Atlanta, including some ongoing now. Let's look at why. 
Emory University political science professor Andre Gillespie points out that just prior to the change in Georgia law, there was a change at the state capitol. After Republicans took control of state government in 2003, they were much more open to the idea of incorporation and cityhood movements, and they changed laws that made it easier. In order to form a new city, the state legislature has to okay the idea first, then it's put to voters who live in that area. Reasons for wanting to form a new city can range from political disagreements to money. According to historic records, the area of Cobb County known as Mableton operated as an incorporated city from 1912 until it had to turn back to the county to help pay for repairs from flood damage in 1916. The area now wants to become a city once again. At 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. He's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and like he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps drive. you get there on time, every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information... Let's continue our learning curve series by checking in with Clayton County 8th grader Judah Whaley. Here's Savannah Levins. Clayton County hit a vaccine milestone this week. Now more than half, 51% of residents have received at least one dose. But that's still significantly lower than the state's average of 65%. Clayton County is a pretty careful county, so we still get our temperature checks. We also still have masks and hand sanitization stations everywhere. But eighth grader Judah Whaley says things are looking up. I haven't had any full asynchronous or virtual weeks because everybody's been staying healthy for the most part. The school district doubling down on efforts to raise vaccination numbers, announcing that starting next week, they'll begin administering the shots to students at school. Any student under 18 will need signed parent permission. There's been efforts ever since the school year started uh, to get vaccinated and they haven't really backed down or anything. I still get emails all the time of seminars and meetings, you know, just to try to help people get vaccinated. Judah is already fully vaccinated. He says he's doing his best to finish the year strong with new perspective. Right now we're living through history and especially with, you know, the conflicts outside of the U.S. right now. I know I'm young, but I feel like wiser. And for those who have been following Judah's progress this year, it probably won't come as a surprise that he was recently named a Georgia Reach Scholar, an honor that comes with a $10,000 scholarship for college. But at the end of the day, Judah says he's just a kid doing his best and aiming for better. And what's the thing you're looking forward to most? Just life being back to normal. Judah is wise beyond his years. We cannot wait to see what he does in the future. We thank you for watching 11 Alive News at noon. Stay safe out there and make it a great day. It's Friday Eve. Get there on time, every time.
11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 